Hello and welcome my dear grade 10 elite students to another video on my channel Mathematics Made Easy. This is Mr. Chekha welcoming you to today's session for your term 1 exams. In this video we are going to be covering exam coverage EOT for your coming math exam and we are going to be focusing on learning objective 2 where you solve quadratic equations by graphing. In this video, we will be solving question 15 to 32 together. It's going to be a long video and it has taken me a lot of time to make it. So I would really appreciate if you would like the video, if you'd comment, if it was useful. And also if you would just subscribe to the channel and share this video with all your grade 10 elite students. Let's start with the video on that note. In this session today, we are covering learning objective 2. And we will be solving question 15 to 32 on page 17 and 18 of your math book. That is solve quadratic equations by graphing. So let's start with solving question 15, 16 and 17. Here you need to solve each equation by graphing. That means you need to do the table of values so that you can draw the graph. And then if you cannot find the exact roots, then you have to state the consecutive integers between which the roots are located. So you have to give uh, the two numbers, the two integers between which the root will be there, if you cannot find it exactly. So this is what the question wants. Let's solve it. We'll begin with question 15. So let's compare this question with the standard form of a quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equal to 0. If we compare this carefully, then your a value is 1, your b value is minus 4, and your c value is 2. These are the three values. Now, first we need to find uh, the axis of symmetry. And to find the axis of symmetry, we need the vertex. So, axis of symmetry is given by the vertex formula x equal to minus b by 2a. I want you to learn this formula so that it helps you to get the numbers easily. Let's plug in. So, x is going to be equal to minus b. Minus b means minus of minus 4 over 2 times a. Put these numbers so x is going to be 4 over 2 which is 2 so this is the value of x now if x is this how much is y you can get by putting here so y is going to be x square minus 4x plus 2 put the numbers so 2 square minus 4 times 2 plus 2 solve it so this is 4 minus 8 plus 2 so this is minus 2 so the axis of symmetry or the vertex is at the point x comma y given by 2 comma minus 2. So one point you already got. Okay. Now for the graph we need the table of values. So I would urge you to make that. So let's take some points here. So table of values has x and y values. Let's take x as 1. Now you may use your calculator to get these numbers very very quickly. You will take different values of x. So let's take these values and plug in the value to get for y. So when you put x as 0, y will come out to be 2. When you put x as 1, you will get minus 2. This point we already got from the vertex and so on. So what are the points you got? 0, 2, 1, minus 1, 2, minus 2, 3, minus 1, 4, 2. So how many points are these? Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you will now go to the graph and plot these 5 points. Plot the 5 points on the x and y axis on your graph sheet and connect them to get the curve. Now, even before I draw the curve, I know these are quadratic equations, so the graph will be in the shape of a parabola. So, let me show you how the graph is. And then from the graph, we will look at the x-intercepts and we will answer the second part of the question and tell which are the consecutive integers between which the roots are located. So, let's go to the next slide. So this is your answer, final answer for question number 15. We already made the table of values. We got the five points, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 0, 2, x is 0, y is 2 is this point, 0, 2. Next point is 1, 1, x is 1, y is minus 1. So it is going to be this point, 
1 comma minus 1 the next point is 2 x is 2 y is this so this is the vertex point 2 comma minus 2 and you know this is the point where, uh, this is the line of axis of symmetry the one that we got from the formula x equal to minus b by a next point is x equal to 3 y equal to 1 this one and the last point is x equal to 4 y equal to 2 which is so now join these dots 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and this is the graph that you get. So this is your final answer. Now we'll answer the second part. The second part asks, if you can't find the consecutive integer, tell uh, between which two roots, uh, which uh, two numbers will the roots lie. I, uh, I will tell you the method to do that. So after you get the graph, you look at the x-intercept. This is one x-intercept. This is another x-intercept. So we don't know the exact value, but we know this value is lying between 0 and 1. And this value is lying between 3 and 4. So your second part of the answer would be there are two roots or two solutions for this uh, quadratic equation x square minus 4x plus 2, which was given to you in the question. And the first root or the first solution lies between this value, which is between 0 and 1 and the second root lies between the values 3 and 2. So this is your complete solution. Let's do one more question. So I will be now doing question 18 for you. We will follow the same method like we did in the previous question. So first we find the axis of symmetry and then we go to the table of values. So axis of symmetry is given by the formula x equals minus b by 2a, compare ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0. So your a is minus 1, your b is minus 4, and your c is 0. So this value will come out to be minus of minus 4, 2 times minus 1. So all this, so this is minus 2. So x is minus 2, put that in this equation. Minus x square minus 4x. So this is minus of minus 2 square minus 4. So wherever there is x, I'm putting minus 2. Simplify and this will come out to be number 4. So what is the vertex? Minus 2 comma. So this is one point. Let's make the table of values and then do the graph. I will do it here. Table of values. So for table of values, we need different values for x and y. Let's take at least a few points. So I start with minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, and 0. Now you must be thinking how we are choosing these points. So we have to choose the points around the vertex. So x is minus 2. So I will choose points around this. So a little bit more than this is minus 4, minus 3, a little bit uh, here. So on both sides, left and right, you choose the points. These values, when you use your calculator, will come out to be this. So these are the following points we are going to plot. Minus 4, 0, 1 point, minus 3, 3, minus 2, 4, minus 1, 3, and 0, 0. Now, this time when you are going to do the graph, it will come out to be a downward parabola. Okay. And remember, this point is the vertex. So we will plot these points, connect them with a, uh, with a curve and I will show you in the next slide how the graph looks like. And then from the graph, we will look at the x-intercepts, the two points where the graph touches the x-axis and accordingly we will answer the second part of the question for question 18. Okay, so let's complete answer 18. This is the table of values when we do the points. Minus 4, 0 is this point. Then minus 3, 3 is this point. Minus 2, 4 is this point, the vertex, the highest point. Minus 1, 3 is this point. And 0, 0 is this point. Now this graph is a downward parabola. Vertex is on the top. The axis of symmetry is passing through the point 
x equal to minus 2. This is the equation. Now, if you look at the graph, this graph is touching the x-axis at two exact points. This is the first point, minus 4, comma 0. This is the second point, 0, comma 0. So, can we say we have exact two roots? We don't need to say they lie between two numbers. They are exact roots. So, x equal to minus 4 is the first root and x equal to 0 is the second root. Remember, the roots, the solution for the quadratic equation always comes from the x-intercepts. x-intercept means the points at which the graph touches the x-axis. So this is an exact solution, exact roots. In a similar way, I would want you to solve the remaining questions. I will now show you the answer key. So this is the final answer key for questions 15 to 23. You can use this answer key to check your answers. Okay, now let's proceed uh, with some more questions. Uh, we are on the same learning objective too, for quadratic equations by graphing. And now we will be working on solving question 24 to 32. So let us begin with question 24. We will be solving together two questions from this slide and then remaining questions, I will provide you the answer key. So let's start with question 24. Okay, so in this question, the graph is not given, but yes, you are given the table of values. So we are going to use the table of values in a very similar way. So first, I want you to find the signs of fx. Where does it change? So here in the first part, the value, the first point is minus 7, 8. The second point is minus 6, minus 1, minus 5, 1, minus 4, 4, minus 3, minus 1, minus 2, minus 8, minus 1, comma, minus 22, and 0, comma, minus 48. So look at fx. Look at the change of sign. Here the sign is same, negative to negative. Here it is changing, negative to positive. Then here it is positive to positive. Then here it is changing second time from positive to negative. Again, it is negative throughout. So there are two times that the sign is changing. So what we can do, there is, uh, we will mark this part. So times sign of fx changes. So whenever the sign of fx changes corresponding to those x values, you can get the 0. So it changed from here minus 1 to 4. So you would say one root is going to lie between minus 6 and minus 5. Similarly, the second root is going to lie between minus 4 and minus 3. So let's write it. The first 0 is between x equal to minus 6 and x equal to minus 5. The second 0 is between x equal to minus 4 and x equal to minus 3. Okay? So this is what the question was asking. You had to use the table to determine the location of zeros of each quadratic function. Also state the consecutive integers between which the roots are located. So I will just write the final answer that you need to answer is the first root is between the consecutive integer minus 6 and minus 5. And the second one is between minus 4 and minus 3. Okay. This is your final answer. Let's now solve question 27, 28, 29. Out of this, we will be doing 27 and 29. And you will be similarly trying out question 28 yourself. So let's solve. So in these kind of question, you are not given the table. You are not given the graph. So you have to make the table of values using your calculator. So let's take some values of x and calculate values of y. So uh, here for this question, I'm taking some positive, some negative, and zero value. So let's begin with minus 3, minus 2, minus 1. These are negative values of x. Then some positive, 0, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I've taken 6 points here. Okay, let's complete the table. Now you will plug in in your calculator the value of y. So y is equal to minus 3x squared plus 3. So this is method of substitution. Put x as minus 3 in this value. From the calculator, it will come out to be minus 24, minus 9, 0, 3, 
0 and minus 9. Now what you have to say? You have to use the table to solve each equation and if exact roots cannot be found, you need to approximate the roots to the nearest 100. So look at these different x values. Let's calculate what points we got here. So the first point we got is minus 3 comma minus 24 which will lie on the graph then minus 2 comma minus 9 then minus 1 comma 0 then 0 comma 3 then 1 comma 0 and 2 comma minus 9. Now let's find the root out of this. Now definitely the root will be that value which is giving you the y value as 0 which satisfies this equation. So you look at this table this table of y values the new y values that you got from the calculator now out of these y values which value of x is y becoming zero it is becoming zero here it is becoming zero here see this value y is zero so when y is zero this is the solution so what are the two values of solution x equal to minus one and x equal to one so there are two roots two solutions two values of this quadratic equation number 27 minus 3x squared plus 3 okay so in this question we get the exact roots okay now let's do the similar method for question 29 so again we will make the table of values i will take some values of x and some values of y so let me begin with some negative values so you get minus 3 minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2. Let's take the value. Plug in your calculator. This time you will put the value of y as this um, equation. So minus 1 by 2, x squared plus x plus 5 over 2. Put this in your calculator. Tell me the numbers you get. Take a minute and check your answers. When you put it, y will come out to be minus 9.5. This is minus 5, this is minus 1.5, 1, 2.5, 1, and 3. Now observe, in this case, no value is 0. So can you find exact roots? No. So we will use the method which we used in the previous question. And notice the sign change. Just notice the sign change in this column of y, this column. Where are the sign changing? So we can say approximate value only for this kind of a solution. So this is negative to negative, negative to negative, no change. So the first change happens here. Okay, so we can say that the sign changes between what value? It changes between, oh, these values are a little uh, wrong. We have to correct them. Please check your answer once more. So here the values will come out to be for x equal to minus 3, it is minus 5, then minus 1.5, then 1, then 2.5, then 3, and then 2.5. Yes, now it is. So now let's observe the sign changes. Let's do it one more time. So the sign changes is happening once only. If you see and that one change is happening where let's mark it so the sign change is happening here from negative to positive right everywhere else here it is only negative to negative here it is negative to positive so therefore the root will lie between these two x values so because the sign change happened between x uh, y equal to minus 1.5 and y equal to 1 so the solution the root will be between minus 2 and minus 1 so let's write it sign change changes between x equal to minus 2 and x equal to minus 1. So now you can uh, try to approximate the value. So for that you will use your calculator again and put some values in between minus 2 and minus 1. So you may try the values I'm writing here. So the values you may try may be between 1.48. Very close you have to choose. So put these values in your calculator for x and see uh, where do you get the closest root. Okay, so try these values. I have written some values here for you. So just put these x values in your calculator, get your y values and approximately the value for the solution for this one will come out to be this point. 
okay so this is how you approximate the root to the nearest hundreds similarly i want you to try the remaining question complete it and now i will provide you the answer so on this slide you will see the answer key for questions 24 to 32 these are your final answers you can use this slide to check your answers that brings us to the end of today's session where we covered learning objective 2 and solved question 15 to 32 together i hope the video helped you to understand these questions well and to prepare for the coming math exam this is mr chika wishing you all the best for your coming math exam thank you for watching and make sure you like share and subscribe to the channel thank you so much